All right, what's up guys? This is a uh, round two, a little bit of a follow-up uh, to my Bioscan assessment, uh, which had levels, I already talked about this before, but it needed to be another video, um, but had exposure to high levels of EMFs, which is kind of a controversial topic um, about uh, how dangerous they are. And EMF is electromagnetic field. So there's a lot of different versions of this, so people get confused in which one you're talking about. Um, there's low frequency, um, which could be non-ionizing radiation, and that's like microwave ovens, computers, visible lights, like light bulbs, uh, smart meters that read your gas outside, and then a Wi-Fi is uh, low frequency, as well as Bluetooth. Bluetooth speakers, um, headphones, those things that people think are so cool, that's low radiation uh, EMFs going into your ear. Same with like watches, um, but, and then there's high frequency EMF radiation, which is like X-rays and gamma rays, um, and that's higher than uh, visible light, and that is, why when you're at the dentist office and they put the bib on you uh, to protect the rest of you besides the teeth of the area, that's why they leave the room. <laughs> uh, they know those are dangerous, but the low ones there's still debate about, uh, which to me is just interesting because I've been studying this for a little bit. My friend has gave me a lot of information about his hand hurting because of wireless equipment, Bluetooth equipment. Uh, and so I just wanna figure this out for myself. And I have a meter, I haven't even looked at it yet. I've, I'm gonna run it through for the first time on camera as a document, because I wanted to write down every room level and try to improve it. Uh, so that is the thing, um, whether you uh, believe in this or not to be a problem for you, um, for me, I've done research and it never was a problem until I got this test back. And I'm not fear-based, but, uh, or live in a fear-based system where this scares the shit out of me. But I want to know why this result came up with a high level exposure to uh, EMFs. Uh, to also follow up, there's to someone who's very cynical about what EMFs are, even human beings put out, we have an electromagnetic field um, that puts out, is put out from our heart center mostly. Uh, but so the debate is really what levels are at that are dangerous. They know the high levels, x-rays and shit like that, radioactive material, super bad for you. Uh, they're saying that low levels, my computer screen that I'm looking at right here, this is my office, with my mouse, wireless keyboard, um, hard drives, lights, microphone here, a lot of electronic shit. So that's the debate is if it's harmful. And I spend a lot of time um, in front of a computer uh, working. So I need to know for my own well-being uh, and document if it's dangerous or if I tell a difference we're here. If I can tell the difference, if I fix it and lower my EMF levels, that is what I am pretty much experimenting to find out what uh, what's gonna work best for me. I have pain in my hand from spending much a lot of time on a mouse, but I don't use, and I have a up sideways mouse like this because it hurt my wrist for a while, so. There might be something else going on there, but I don't even have Bluetooth mouse. Mine are both wired, but it could be the keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is grab that EMF meter and do some testing around the house and document it for me and show you guys the proof of what the meter is saying. Uh, I borrowed this meter from a friend and it's the recommended one, so it's not like a cheap, cheapo one. I'm sure there's different levels that are higher than this even, but it's, uh, pretty accurate data. So we'll even test like the microwave. So this is another thing I wanted to show real quick uh, or talk about. 
the, just the, the level of people debating this. So uh, the kind of the way it is going right now is that people say, uh, if is it harmful to humans, uh, and they don't, there's no evidence that low level electromagnetic field is harm to human human health is what it says but low level could be our own heart center like what you have to like equate it as like the sun also gives off electromagnetic uh field so that if you're totally a devil's advocate you're like well that there's always this shit happening which is true but if you stay in the sun too long, you get fucking burnt. So that's the same thing, I guess, what I'm trying to figure out is if I sit around my computer too much, too close, with too many of these things putting off this signal, am I gonna get burnt? Uh, and so that's what I'm testing today. And um, I'm not I'm not scared, but it's, uh, we're about to find out the results, so. Here we go. Meter here. So this, I should mention, is a RF meter. So it doesn't do EMFs. Specifically, I guess there's a different one for that. That's, but this is just as important because it's radio frequency, which is a electromagnetic it's one of the levels, so shit, we'll just turn it up right here. This, I guess, is where I spend the most time working. I was going to do it in the room where the router was first, but uh, here we go. I'm going to just turn it on, and I think it matters where you point it to, but it's going to be obnoxiously loud, so because uh, it picks up a lot of different kinds, so like light bulbs will make it sound a little different than a computer. I don't know. My buddy showed me how to use it briefly, and he has very low amounts in his how so here we go six was six was the high it's averaging around over two sometimes four if like we go just by my phone here it's up at the four level so oh my gosh four to five right by my phone that means when you're talking on it then that's above the level that they say is safe was 2.5 watching this it's pushing four can you see it it's consistently in a dangerous amount of exposure yeah so it goes up when you're like if, so shit so if i were to like when you're actually streaming, when it's working, the levels seem to go up. So, if you're not doing shit, it's pretty mellow. It's in danger zone right by my computer. Um, there's no doubt about it. Let's go. Ah, my job. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take it around other rooms. Uh, even just walking around my house, it's reading red. When I'm standing by my modem, it's in the red. It's as high as it'll go, so it's peaking out. That means it's putting that putting off a lot. So I need to get a cage around that thing. Everything here. This is I listen to like guided meditations uh in my bedroom with that bose speaker hear that as soon as i turn that on it sent this thing going nuts and i sleep with it like i do guided meditations because so i sleep with a fan on too so it's loud i put this thing as loud as it goes and it's only a couple feet from my head so it turns out that this thing is super high levels of emf One point twenty one gigawatts. The hell's a gigawatt? This electrical, but I 
need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! So now here's the microwave. All right, let's turn the microwave on for just a little bit. And this is how far I would stand, I guess, away from the microwave. I have not used the microwave for a while because I've read some tests about it, but uh, I still use it every once in a while, obviously, but I try not to. I try to heat stuff up on the stove, but uh, okay, so 10 seconds. And I would stand this far away but see, there's a metal cage around it as well, so that's supposed to help block <laughs> the frequencies, but here we go. If you stand close, it's off the charts high, obviously, like I said. At, it's supposed to register at over 25. even 10 feet back it's off the charts as soon as as soon as that thing turns off this thing picks up and knows it's off so I'm seriously like at least it's about 10 feet away and it's off the charts high above the 2.5 that the government says is or that whoever says is reasonable Crazy uh, high levels uh, around all the culprits that were supposed to be a problem. All right, so now I'm gonna go um, check out the levels down in my basement. And I guess the, the thing is that I started just to realize how much time I spend around tech, like um, computers and this is a DJ down here. So. I need to see what all these rooms, so this is, let's test this right now, this is just like my listening area, so this could just be lights and the stereo, and that's a very, this one is actually, can't see me anymore, very tolerable level, it's like, now I'm below the router. But just down here without anything on was below one. So that would be a reasonable level. So different lights throw off. So these are like studio lights. Those don't affect it, which is good to know. That's a LED. Doesn't affect it. The router is right above me. That's where the TV is. And now the thing's going red zone. It's redlining, man. So now DJ station. It's below one, which is makes me super excited because I'll give up my. Well, I don't want to give this up. I don't want to. I don't know the solution to fix this. It's one of my favorite things to do is play music. The DJ equipment doesn't put off much of a signal. And actually my laptop's not doing awful either. So we're at... Oh, because it's not trying to download anything. Like it seems that seems that if you're going to deal with tech, that you have to deal with some some low I'm trying to figure out what's doing what so clearly uh, from all this that we're looking at Wi-Fi is big Bluetooth is big that roughly pretty low with no Wi-Fi it's exciting all right looks like battery's gonna die but I gotta go get my room measured um, that's also a big deal to me because uh, once I do that, I'll come back and charge up this battery and tell you the ways that if you are concerned about this that I just looked up a second ago that 
can help reduce, which is what I have to do, is lower the levels. But let's see if I can get to my bedroom before this battery dies. I don't keep anything, I try to keep this minimal, like no TVs, nothing, just sleep in here. And so, that's at, when it's really low, it's at like 0.1. Okay, recharge the batteries. Here's another thing I forgot about is the wireless thermometer, thermostat. <laughs> so, Point five to one up close. So here's the next test I want to do is well I can't turn off all the lights, so those might still kick off something another thing that I'm gonna measure in a sec. Like dirty electricity, that's different. But I'm gonna turn off my modem. I think that's the biggest culprit here. And retest all these areas with the modem off. So hopefully I'm not downloading anything um, or uploading anything. So here goes the test to figure out what the ratings look like without it. Cause maybe I could unplug it when I'm not using it or like definitely at sleep time. Okay, so I think I've documented everything, but I'm gonna, even though it's gonna be dark out, I'm still gonna go document the smart meter to see what it reads before I make a case for it. So here we go. So that's the blinking light. Okay, so it spiked around the smart meter as expected. Um, it didn't go bonkers uh, as expected, which that's a good thing. Uh, I don't want any of these levels to be high to for any reason. Uh, I want to keep them as low as possible, so uh, at least I have some documentation. So it was ranging between 0.3 and 1. Maybe I need to do it during the day or different test different times, so this might not be the only time I do this. But as I walked around um, outside, there the thing was running in the green. Like, it wasn't picking up signals from the neighbor's house, which is can be a problem if you have neighbors with a lot of uh, same shit, like powerful modems. And maybe my modem would have been, I turned it off right now, so maybe that would have been registering if it was on. But it doesn't register too much around me, which is good. But that can change, if you live in like an apartment building or office building where there's a lot of routers and stuff, obviously that's going to be a lot more exposure. <laughs> so, keep that in mind. Um, I have one more thing to test, but that's it for the metering for now. So, boom, done with that. Okay, so this is one other test that's not the same as EMF or I guess it's all kind of similar, but uh, it is line EMI meter. And so this is just kind of testing how dirty the electricity is. And if you have a lot of dimmers and stuff, it's supposed to be super dirty. And I have dimmers fucking everywhere. I love dim bright lights. I don't like bright fluorescent lights. So this could be a problem for me. So here goes the test on that. Okay, so I guess I concluded all of my readings for my documentation to see if I can improve it. Um, but I also wanted to just kind of give, uh, I would encourage anybody obviously to do your own research on this stuff. It's pretty controversial because of big companies uh, don't probably want to admit that this stuff is 
harmful to you because it would make them not sell their product and it doesn't seem like there's a solution out there uh, to get rid of it like it's gonna exist so I think to learn how to live with it and limit it um, I know I'm not gonna just stop using a computer regardless probably of the levels uh, I hate to say it but it's kind of my livelihood so uh, with that being said <clears throat> I did find some articles that <laughs> make me want to encourage everybody to research it more uh, here are some pointers that will help you limit your uh, exposure to it which is what I have to do so um, there's all sorts of protect protection products out there shielding devices for your smart meter and things that I'll have to figure out and maybe I'll share it with you once I do it so stay tuned for that but you can uh, definitely limit your cell phone use don't use um, don't put it up next to your face so Put it, uh, use wire, not those little, whatever, things that people think are so cool, but they're dangerous for you. So keep it wired and away from you and just limit your use if possible. Definitely no Bluetooth, don't like be running that stuff in your car, um, same stuff. Wi-Fi, um, try to limit the Wi-Fi use. Um, so you can just put it like if you're not using your Wi-Fi, which I guess everybody probably always is, but put it on like a power switch and turn it on and off. I know I'm going to start flipping it off when I get done working at night. I'm going to flip it off and only turn it back on when I get back home from work and I'm going to start working again. So uh, that's an easy fix for sleeping. So definitely I would do that. Um, you can also buy or make protective cases for your phone to completely because a lot of times even if they're off they still send signals um, try to avoid body contact with your cell phone and computer uh, I think that's like well I guess your phone but I don't think you get too close with your computer get grounding grounded not like by your parents but they mean like earthing uh, it's a way to detox EMF exposure. It's really just when you go outside barefoot on like the earth at some point, not cement. Like this won't work if you if you live in like New York City. But if you go out and just get out on some grass or dirt or something, um, you can soak up negatively charged electrons. I do this every day anyway. It makes me feel great. So um, that's good to know that I'm doing the right things. You can use healing crystals. That might be kind of woo-woo for some people. I have some, and I think they're pretty legit. Create a low EMF sanctuary. Um, so like I was saying before, if you live in New York City, you really have a hard time doing this because everybody else is sending signals through your like apartment or your workplace or whatever. But you can turn off your devices so that they don't accept Wi-Fi, um, just at least when you go to sleep. So try to, that's what I'm gonna try to do is minimize it for at least sleep or a certain amount of time. Uh, and that's why I was getting a reading outside uh, when it was going from 0.3 to over one. It was, it was doing a pulse, which it does 190,000 times per day. So, I guess you can try to opt out of those. I'm gonna to try to get a cage to put around the outside, uh, like a metal casing that protects it. Uh, and then spend more time with people and in nature. That's legit too. Under the sun helps to decalcify your pineal gland. You should probably try to get 20 minutes uh, per day on the back of your dome. Um, so those are just a few tips. I'm sure there's other ones. I mean, I've read some of these things are a little bit here that you can you can buy like chambers pretty much like a for your bedroom if you were to live in a city or something to totally minimize it. Um, which now that I think about it, I think about like 
the amount of frequencies and stuff at hospitals that can't be can't be healthy can't be good for healing interesting they should have more of those in hospitals it's a great idea for somebody that wants to roll with it I hate hospitals though it's all yours all right that's it for now um I'm going to chop this video up and do more documenting see how I, if I can decrease those numbers. If I can, I'll tell you how I did it. Uh, if I can't, I'm going to have to find a way and find out and document how I feel. Currently my right hand feels like it's got some zzz in it. Um, but there's a lot of other things you can't see, like even depression and insomnia and other things that are associated with this so do your research uh, I'll put in more information or a link to a blog that tells more information this is mostly supposed to show the documentation with the meters so stay tuned and check out more of this content see ya